Hello, everyone. I'm Ben Johnson, and this is the Perpetual Chess Podcast. On Perpetual Chess, I have weekly conversations with the chess world's best players, promoters, and educators about their lives, careers, current projects, and best practices. For more information, go to perpetualchesspod.com. Hey everyone, I am here with Thibaut Duplissy, the founder of LeeChess.org, an open source uh, chess playing and learning software. I think a lot of listeners will be familiar with it, but I also want to thank Thibaut because we've had more technical difficulties than I've ever had. He had to order a mic just for the interview, and then last week we had the misfortune of having a, a pretty nice discussion that only recorded my voice. So I know you guys love my voice, but I think we'd like to hear from Thibaut too. So Thibaut, thanks for coming on and thanks for your patience. Hi, Ben. Thanks for inviting me. There's no problem at all. I, oh. I have to practice with this thing. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about the background of how this amazing chess site came into existence? Uh, yeah, sure. With pleasure. Um, well, today, uh, Lichess.org is um, quite a massive uh, chess server. It's the, the, the solution uh, a lot of people have chosen to play chess nowadays, uh, be it in the browser or uh, on their mobile applications. So, it started as just a way to quickly play games uh, with a friend and it expanded to the point that uh, today we can, of course, play games with friends, but also with uh, total strangers and uh, against the computer. We can play tournaments and study chess and uh, uh, save the study you make. We have opening explorers and uh, computer analysis and forums and, and whatnot, what you want. I mean... Uh, it has grown a lot. Uh, the project started six years ago as a very simple technical experiment, and it was picked up by the, the chess community because uh, it's an open source project. It works uh, with, the vo with the work of uh, volunteers, and it has grown uh, to the point that today it's the second most popular chess website on the Internet, and we're very proud of it. Yes, which is an amazing accomplishment. And uh, Lee Chess has uh, three core promises. For those not familiar with them, they are LeeChess.org will always be free, it will never contain advertisements, and it will always be open source. So, Debo, why don't you tell us about how you uh, developed that philosophy for your site? Um, yeah, um, I, I think actually it's the best way to build uh, quality software. Uh, also, it's the, the most fun way because, uh, in my opinion, uh, having clients is not fun. I, I don't want to have a, a, a consumer relationship uh, with uh, the chess players. Um, I, I want to interact uh, with people, you know, not just consumers, and I want them to be uh, uh, contributors, uh, if possible. So... The only way to get that is, of course, to have an open source uh, code, code base. Uh, it's to make the project free. And uh, because I, I hate advertisements for so many reasons, uh, that, that, that was just... Uh, so why do you hate advertisements? Um, I think it pollutes everything it touches. Uh, advertisement, it needs us to be stupid and it makes us stupid. And it's never, it's never required, really. And that's the point of Leeches. That's one of the points uh, of Leeches. Uh, of course, we want to provide uh, great chess resources for uh, everyone in the world. But we also want to prove that it's not required to have a profit-oriented uh, ID in order to make a good website. And if it's free, it's not required uh, to put advertisements. Today, we have a lot of games played, a lot of players, there is some architecture, uh, servers that we have to pay for. And we absolutely don't need uh, investors and we don't need advertisements at all. Okay, now are there any advertisements that you like? Like if you're ever forced to watch a commercial, do you ever find any that you find entertaining or that uh, may maybe... Um introduce you to a feature of a product that makes it more appealing to you? Uh, no, absolutely not. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> you're, you're a tough crowd. <laughs> um, so I know that, and for a little more background, you're a 31-year-old coder. Uh, I'm, a, I'm an expert on your background now since we recorded this last week as well. Um, so 31-year-old coder, and you've got a team of people working on Leechess besides yourself. Is that correct? Yes, absolutely. Uh, I just started the project I'm still working on it every day, but uh, most of the things that make Leeches work today, they're not from me. It's the work of a team. Absolutely, yeah. 
Okay. And could you tell us a little bit about your background as it relates to chess? Um, I'm just an uh, average um, uh, chess player. I started maybe I was like uh, eight, nine years old. Uh, my dad uh, taught me the rules, as with most play- chess players I heard. And I've just been playing casually, no tournaments, uh, no club, just playing with whoever wanted to uh, to share a game with me. And I've been playing a lot more since I made Lee Chess, that's for sure. Right. And I, I read somewhere in an interview that, that you said sort of the... Uh the fundamental driver of Lee chess, or rather your vision, it's it's bigger than chess in a sense. It's um, chess is just a vehicle for you to to show what's possible with open source software. Um, is that a is that a fair assessment? That that's yeah, that is how it started. Uh, absolutely, Lee chess started as a technical experiment. Uh, it was like six years ago and uh, real-time technologies were emerging on the internet. I wanted to experiment with that. I wanted to uh, learn the technology. So uh, I just wanted to make a quick project uh, for real-time communication. And I was like, yeah, I like chess. Chess is simple enough. So I, I built a chessboard, connected chessboard uh, that worked in the browser. And it started like that. And then for a few years, most of the, the, the improvement that I was doing, uh, I was doing it for the technical pleasure of it, just for the sake of learning stuff and experimenting with technology. But uh, when the project uh, went on and on, uh, I became more and more interested in, in chess and uh, how to best help the chess players around the world and less and less about technology. And nowadays, everything I do about Lee Chess is, is no longer about uh, me learning and experimenting, but only about uh, making the best uh, chess product on the internet. Okay. And when did you uh, transition to working full-time on Lee Chess? Um, well, I've been working full-time for quite a while. Uh, maybe, yeah, two years ago uh, was when I quit uh, my last job uh, in a French startup, uh, Prismic.io, a really great startup. I can certainly recommend to anyone working there. I will totally go back, but uh, uh, nowadays I just have to, uh, to have all my time uh, to focus uh, on the chess. Okay. And for those of you who heard the interview uh, that we recently had on Perpetual Chess with Luke Carmen Velotti, uh, you probably know that coders like Debo and Luke are in very high demand in our society. So it's, it's quite a sacrifice that Debo is making in order to create this product for the chess community. So thank you for doing that. Well, it's not a sacrifice at all. Uh, I absolutely love what I'm doing. And yeah, I, I will not uh, take anything else, really. Okay. It's a lot of fun. I'm glad to hear it. And for those, since we do have mostly a, a chess playing and chess interested audience, why don't you take us through what a typical day is like for you as someone more on the code and designing side? What, what do you do on a given day uh, to make Lee Chess better? Yeah, sure. Um, well, first the phone rings at... 8 a.m. Uh, usually, and I'm going to review the emails and, and the, the, the Slack, the team Slack, make sure uh, nothing bad happened during the night. Usually, nothing bad went during the night because if it did, then the phone will have rang uh, during the night and I will have woken up. So if I didn't, it means everything was good. So uh, quickly, uh, I proceed to deploying uh, the source code uh, from the day before. Um, I try to do the deploy very early in the morning because that's the time when Lead Chess is the more quiet and it's not going to disrupt uh, too many games. Uh, after I do that, I usually take a cup of coffee, answer the emails. Uh, we receive about maybe 30 emails a day. Uh, so customer, uh, not really customer, but support for, for chess players. And then I'll be reviewing the, the work that was done uh, by the team during the night and merging pull requests, which means adding more code or reviewing code that people want to add to the site. Then proceed to coding myself, fixing bugs, and preparing everything uh, for the deploy on the last on the next morning. Great dedication that you leave your phone on to, to ring in case of technical issues. I'm surprised surprised to hear that. Yeah, we well, we want Lee Chess to run. I mean, that's more important than my sleep. And fortunately, it. it, it Rarely, very rarely happens that someone had, has to call me uh, during the night. It's at most once a month, not more than that. That's a lot, though. Once a month to have your your sleep disrupted for you know a free program where you're donating your time. 
Well, that, that's quite normal, actually. Uh, for a sysadmin, which is a uh, professional of uh, keeping servers uh, alive, uh, these people, they are called much, much more often than that. Okay. And do you, do you have, so I know you've got a team of people working with you. So do you guys like set a schedule to make sure that there's always someone monitoring the site? Uh, we don't set a schedule, but there is always uh, someone monitoring the site. Uh, there are people in the team from absolutely everywhere in the world. So there's always someone uh, on it. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay. And the people who help you with your site, like how, how, how do they discover it and what do their backgrounds tend to be? Well, there are very different kind of people in the team. Uh, we have, of course, some uh, technical people, uh, programmers, usually quite young. They, they might be students or working for a company. Everybody is volunteer. They, they all do that on their free time, of course, um, which is a strength, uh, really, because it means Liches is written by people who do it out of passion. They do not do it for money. Uh, I mean, we can do a lot of good work uh, for money, uh, of course, and we all have to. But when you're doing the work that you do out of passion and because you really want to do it and you're not getting, getting any, any financial compensation for it, in my experience, it, it really gives the best uh, out of people. They just give the best that they have and, and uh, that's how we can achieve really, really great quality. Uh, oh man, what was the question again? Um, oh yeah, how, how you find your team? Yeah, yeah, uh, they're, they're absolutely amazing people. There, there are some technical people helping helping me with development, and everyone can take part of this. Just uh, propose some changes to the code, and we are going to review them and maybe apply them. And if they do it uh, often enough, they, they can join the team. Um, there is Luca Bonnet who does uh, the sysadmin stuff, uh, which is caring about the servers. Uh, there's a huge team of moderators, of course, uh, keeping track of communication on the site, ensuring that everyone is being fine and nice. And uh, other moderators who uh, do the anti-cheat uh, work, absolutely uh, necessary. Like There's like 10 or 12 people doing that every day. And there's also just chess lovers and, and streamers and people using the site and who who has who have ideas about uh, where the site uh, should go and what should be implemented and what should be improved. Okay, yeah. And could you take us through uh, a couple of the the additions you're working on currently? I mean, I know you guys have a lot of chess variants. You have um, your analysis board that's very popular. What other projects uh, do you have in the hopper? Mm, yes. Um, well, that's not very exciting, but I got to improve uh, the way the site is translated. Uh, of course, we do the translation uh, with contributors uh, in a typical open source manner like uh, everything else. Uh, Liches is actually translated in 80 languages, which is absolutely huge. But uh, like five years ago, I coded a way for anyone on the website to help uh, translating. People can come and say, hey, uh, there's no translation in, in, in Tagalog, uh, my language, so they can start and, and contribute the Tagalog uh, translation. And they just provide like 10 or 15 sentences out of the 500, I think. And someone else can come and continue the translation. And this way, uh, we have built uh, 80 languages translation for HS. I have to improve on that because we have more and more sentences uh, to translate. And uh, the system I built five years ago was designed for like, 80, 100 uh, sentences for like 10 or 12 languages. And today it's grown so big, it's, it's no longer manageable. So uh, I, I'm working on finding uh, a better way to, uh, to crowdsource uh, the translation of the website. And then we're going to improve on the learning aspect uh, of the website. Maybe uh, the new variant, we're talking about it. I'm not sure yet. Uh, we're also working on improving uh, clock precision and uh, lag compensation. And a lot of other stuff. It's okay. are happening you at, all the time. Are you able to say what variant you're thinking about? We are thinking about Sierra One Chess, but yeah, I make I make no promise at all. And uh, I think the variant is a lot of fun. Uh, it's always fun to, to to code, and there's always people glad that we did that. But at the same time, it adds complexity to the site. Uh, it adds uh, UI complexity uh, everywhere. We display ratings. We have to display uh, potentially ratings for all these variants. Uh, it splits the user base and it adds code complexity, which makes uh, everything then uh, harder to fix and to improve. And 
how popular are the chess variants? Do you have a sense of like what percentage of users uh, are playing them? Oh, we have uh, precise numbers. Yes, uh, I don't have them right here, but they're not popular. Uh, yeah, that's what I would sh- think. Sh- short so, answer, they're not. so it's funny because you you know you'd probably get one or two requests for it, but really it's like that's the person that's going to use it. You know, especially as you get to the more obscure variants. Yeah, exactly. It's it's always the, the same thing. Like there's a group of people who want absolutely uh, a certain feature, like a chess variant, and they're absolutely enthusiastic about it. And they're gonna tell you, yeah, if you if you build that that feature, if you add this variant, your website is going to become insanely popular. It's going to be absolutely huge. But they're only talking for themselves, in fact. And most of people, they absolutely don't care. Um, so that that's why I'm very reluctant uh, nowadays to to adding variants. The last one I added was uh, Racing King. And it has a very enthusiastic community, but it, in fact, like it's one player of the, of, out of 1000, uh, who cares about it and, and plays it. And how does, yeah. so how does it work? Is it like the Kings try to get to a certain square or what? Uh, your King has to get to, uh, the opposite, uh, uh, rank. Okay. Uh, yeah, all the pieces start uh, on the same side of the board. It's very weird. And you have to raise your king uh, to the other side of the board, and you cannot give check. And yeah, it's it's really, really weird. Really fun variant to play. But a lot of people, they just don't care uh, learning about these rules. Okay. And Thibaut, we've had guests on uh, who who do work for Chess24 and Chess.com. Um, how, do, how do you envision Lee Chess fitting in within the sort of online chess uh, ecosystem. Do you consider them competition? Um, yes, in a way, they can be competition, but we're just we're just building our thing. Uh, we don't we don't mind really what the others uh, are doing. Uh, we get requests uh, of what chess players want, and we know what we want to do and in which direction we want to go, and we just do it. We don't really regard them as competition because. Uh, they are companies, they are here for profit. Uh, we are not. We are a non-profit association. It's really not the same goals. I mean... Okay. Um, yeah, I'm just curious because I... I um as you know, I have friends who make their living from it, and I think some people perceive Lee Chess as a threat and others don't. Uh, I'm of the mindset that uh, it's good to have a place to play for free and that the other chess sets can, can provide things that... The yours can't. I'm not as opposed to the the profit motive as you are, but I'm still a big fan of what you guys are doing. Um, yeah, maybe maybe it can be a threat to a few people who are going to make uh, a bit less money. But at the same time, I think it's a huge benefit for uh, tens of thousand players who are glad uh, to play for free, maybe because they can't afford uh, to get uh, a premium account on a paying website, maybe because they don't want to see ads uh, just like me. So, yeah, I mean, in everything good, there is going to be someone finding something bad about it all the time. I don't mind. Yeah. And uh, so I imagine you have some overhead costs for Lee Chess. Uh, So how are those covered? Uh, Lee Chess costs, yeah. Um, everything is very transparent. We have a public Google Doc that details uh, all the money that we spend. Uh, it's like, if I remember correctly, it's fifteen hundred uh, for the servers. So that's where per, most of the month? money go per month. Yeah, okay. absolutely. And then there's some uh, extra costs for uh, hosting and, and GitHub and sending emails and stuff like that. And uh, we are trying to put uh, some some money uh, in the association, the French association that I made, uh, in order to pay me a salary, a full time salary, uh, very modest salary. But that's going to uh, allow me to continue working on uh, on Lily Chess, and all of that is paid uh, by the donations. Okay. Chess players make donations uh, for the project. We don't even do any any uh, call. We don't bug people about donations the way like Wikipedia does, for instance. It's actually quite hard to find the donation page uh, on Lee Chess, but it's sufficient because we get enough money to pay the server and soon to pay me uh, a modest salary. So that's okay. all good. So are you able to uh, to support yourself based on the donations? I would be uh, based on the donations. I'm not yet, but that's because of uh, French uh, government and laws being very slow and very heavy uh, in order to start uh, okay. getting a salary at an event association. Okay. And I know that you like to travel too. So do you get to, um, 
you get to take your work on the road? Yes, uh, absolutely. Last travel I did was in uh, in Asia. I was for eight months in uh, in Thailand, Laos, Cambodia, and and Vietnam. And I've been working all the time, like every day. Uh, I moved to a new place. I, I settled in a in a new place, and I start working <laughs> basically and. And from time to time, of course, I'm going to take some, some, some time off and, and, and visit around and enjoy the country, you know, uh, and connect with the people around. But even in, when I'm traveling, uh, still most of my time uh, is spent working. Yeah. Okay. And when, when you meet people and tell them that what you do, how do they generally react? It, it's a mix of disbelief and incompression uh, most of the time so I, I usually don't uh, unless I think I, I, I'm facing someone with some technical knowledge you know I, I'm, I just say that uh, I'm a programmer you know I'm not like hey I run a it, it, it becomes a little bit complicated uh, to explain really what it is so even even times uh Every time, of course, I see someone playing chess uh, when traveling. I, I go and, and offer a game, and and when they're playing chess, and sometimes it's it's really funny because nowadays people they play on on, the, on their mobile phone. Of course, even when they play on the board, uh, very little people actually carry a board, a chess board. So we play on mobile, and and sometimes they just launch the lead chess mobile app. I just have a I just have a small smile, but I, I enjoy not saying uh, who I am. Uh, oh, that's funny that you've seen that. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, I'm like, hey, I know this app, it's really good. And, chess. and then we play chess and we have fun and we enjoy the end and, and that's it. Yeah. Nice. Sounds good. Uh, and you like to, um, you, we discussed last week, you, uh, you like to bring a guitar as well. Is that, a, is that part of your traveling experience? Uh, yeah, especially when I go to countries uh, where I don't speak the main language. Uh, I mean, if you have a chessboard and a guitar, you're going to be able to communicate with most people around the world, uh, is my theory. And it, it does work pretty well. I mean, those are the universal languages. Nice. And how did, you, how did you settle? You said you recently moved. So how did you decide where to live? Uh, I came back to France for two reasons. First, because I, I needed to uh, make a French non-profit association uh, for the chess. And then because most of my friends uh, are in France and I just wanted to touch base, you know, enjoy my friends because before uh, I go back uh, to traveling, next time it's going to be in Colombia. Nice. Do you have next your flight time. booked? Um, not yet. I usually do that at the last time. The oh, prices okay. are the same. Yeah. And what about like, where do you typically stay when you're traveling? Um, very cheap uh, backpacker guest house uh, is my pick all the time. I just love the ambience. That's great, great way to meet a lot of people, and it's cheap as well. So okay. And if, when you go to do your coding, are you typically doing it like at sort of you know wherever you're staying, or do you go to coffee shops, or what? Uh, what's your routine since you're always in a different place? Uh, usually in different places. Uh, usually public places. Uh, I, I like. Uh, like in Asia, uh, most guest houses, they have uh, a large uh, public room with coaches and, and very chill. People play music, they chat around, they, they have beers. I like to just bring my computer here and start working here. And I, I like being uh, uh, disconcentrated. Is that an English word? Yeah, maybe. Uh, by, by the people around and, and picking occasions to, to just leave the screen and, and starting chatting with people. Okay, so let's get back to talking about chess. I know you mentioned your dad taught you when you were nine. Uh, what's your own chess experience like? Like, do you have a rating and do you have goals in chess? Uh, how do you approach it when you're playing? I do have a goal in chess. Uh, it's to have fun. <laughs> That's the <laughs> best goal. <laughs> yeah, I, I'm not really a competitive person. Um, but I, I enjoy, I absolutely love playing. Uh, I do play about... Uh, between 10 and 30 games a day. Uh, I play a lot of blitz and, and bullet chess. I'm like an average uh, internet chess player. My rating is about uh, 1600 uh, only chess, the average being 1500. And nowadays I, I do play a lot of bullet chess. Uh, I'm suffering from a bit of a, of a bullet chess addiction, uh, tilting hard, you know, like for <laughs> one yeah. hour in front of the screen and, and swearing and and sweating a lot and it's just a kind of a workout it's it's a lot of fun but i also do like slow blitz and and i al al always have like uh 
seven to ten uh, ongoing correspondence uh, games as well, on which I'm, I can spend like 15, 20 minutes on each move. Okay. And do you ever discover like bugs in the software from playing? Not really from playing. Um, yeah, not really, because the way I use the software is the way I planned it to be used. And that's not the way you find bugs. Uh, I do find bugs when watching people live streaming or making YouTube videos. They hit all the bugs. And that's why I spend also a lot of time uh, watching uh, chess videos and live streams. That, that it's, it's fantastic to see people using your software. You know, they, they hit bugs that you, you had never imagined. They, they, they fail to find features that you thought were obvious. And they also find new ways to doing things, to using the software that you, you didn't uh, imagine at all. It's very rich and very interesting to do that. Nice. And probably helps your chest a little bit too. Uh, yeah, at the same time, which is a nice benefit. <laughs> and do you have any like favorite YouTubers or streamers? Oh yeah, of course. Uh, I love, I love Tony Rotella. Uh, he has a great play style. Uh, he explains very well. He knows the chess a lot because, uh, he conceals, uh, he gave me a lot of hints about, uh, where the chess should go and what it should do. I also love, uh, Astane and I rarely, very rarely miss, uh, an episode of Chess Wiz. Okay. So Tony Rotella and Astane Lopez, uh, two, uh, up and coming YouTubers. Um, yes. Oh, and do they help you with uh, with improving the site? Uh, yes, uh, Tony Wartella is part of the team and uh, is an absolute chess lover and uh, opening nerd. He, he was of absolutely great help uh, to build the Opening Explorer, for instance, and also to build uh, Lee Chess Studies, uh, the synchronized analysis chessboard uh, of Lee Chess. I did the coding, but he did all the the the, pro, the product owning. Uh, which is, he had the vision uh, for these features. He knew what he wanted and how it had to be. And I just followed his instruction and, and built the code. And that's the best way to work. Yeah, I'm sure that was that was helpful. Um, it's, yeah. I mean, okay. And with coding, uh, how, why don't you tell us a little bit more about your background of how you got into coding? Mm, yep, yeah, uh, I started quite young. Uh, before we even had a computer uh, at home, uh, I got a graphical uh, calculator. Uh, it was required for school. And I figured that you could get the calculator to do things that were actually not boring. Uh, calculators are usually, usually uh, designed to, to, to make calculations, you know, boring stuff and graphs and, and things. But you could also uh, make games uh, out of them. So I started uh, printing uh, source code uh, from the, the school's computer. Uh, and you could not uh, connect the calculator to the computer and transfer the source code to the calculator. So you actually had to use a printer and print out the source code and then enter it again uh, by hand uh, into the calculator. And that's, so, that's how I learned the basics of programming. So was there like a, like what was the original action that made you even think about printing the source code of a calculator because that would that would never occur to me <laughs> like was something not working or i don't know i guess i guess i'm just weird uh. <laughs> <laughs> well the world the chess world is better off for your weirdness that's for sure but yeah i, I can't imagine like doing that i mean i, I kind of wish i had because then i would know how to code <laughs> but uh but that's incredible and then so pick it up from there what happened after that uh, after that, I, I spent a lot of time doing that and I, I met someone else, uh, doing that. He became one of my best friends. And then we moved on to, to computer programming, uh, first basic and then some C and then Java. And then, uh, it was like 10 years ago, I built a, a Facebook like, uh, chess website, uh, not chess website, website, uh, for my friends where we could communicate real time and, and and make all sorts of things and internet share pictures and travels and and things like that um i spent a lot of time building that so then naturally uh, i found a job uh, doing pretty much the same thing which is php and database and then i did a lot of php for various companies and it was five years ago uh I, I decided to, to try something completely different. So I looked at the different programming languages and uh, I picked the one that was the farther uh, from PHP, the most different, absolutely. So PHP is like 
quite easy to learn, uh, uh, dynamic, uh, imperative programming language. So uh, I went for something much, much more obscure, uh, something statically typed and uh, uh, very functional programming oriented language. And I learned Scala. And that's the language that Liches uh, is entirely written of uh, nowadays. So did you have the goal of uh, using it for Liches or you just wanted to learn a new language and it worked out that way? I just wanted to relearn uh, completely uh, what my job was. I, I felt like I had learned everything I could about uh, PHP and the way uh, programmers, uh, PHP programmers see the world. I just wanted to have a, a completely different uh, point of view and so that I can make my own choices, you know. And I discovered that I absolutely love functional programming. I absolutely love static typing. So I learned uh, Haskell as well and uh, Clojure, which are absolute, absolute fantastic uh, programming languages. No one starts with that. They don't teach these programs, uh, these languages uh, in universities. That's very sad. People, they, they get to learn about Java and, and C++ most of the time. I think it's a big mistake. Guys, go learn Haskell. You'll thank me later. Uh, so if you were to learn a new, if you knew nothing about programming, you, you're saying Haskell would be a good one to learn first? Uh, I've been teaching programming to uh, uh, a few people. So I, I think the, the easiest language to get started would be Clojure. Okay. Uh, it, it has very, very minimal uh, syntax. Uh, it has no static typing. So the, 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 the learning curve is very low, but it's completely uh, functional programming oriented. There's no mutation. So that, that just makes things extremely clear and very st simple to get started with. Okay. And when, and when you teach yourself a, a programming language, how do you go about doing it? Um, I usually buy a book um, and then read a chapter, get extremely excited about what I learn, uh, make a little project and get on the keyboard and, and use what I just learned and then find that I need to do to, to know more than that. So go back to the book, learn something exciting again, and rinse and repeat. I think you, you have to to learn theory and practice at the same time, uh, in my opinion, to learn efficiently programming. Okay. Um, and to pivot a little bit, we talked about this last week, but I think it's an important topic for listeners uh, to hear about. Um, what do you guys do about cheating on Lee Chess? We do a lot. Uh, there's a lot of energy that goes into uh, fighting cheating, of course. Uh, there's a lot of people who are going to cheat on the internet. They just, we are not mad at them. They, they don't realize uh, what it means for the sport. Uh, well, I, I'm mad at them. <laughs> I think it's ridiculous, but, but go on. Yeah, I, of course it is ridiculous, but they, they just don't realize. I, I think they don't realize that so many people are going to cheat. They're like, hey, I, I had the most fabulous ID, I'm going to use a computer engine and, and beat everyone. And I think most of them, they, they don't realize how big of a problem it is. Uh, well, they don't realize that they're hurting their opponents and they're hurting uh, online chess uh, in general. Fortunately, most of them, they just do it in a very silly way. Uh, so it's, it's very easy to detect uh, automatically. Most cheaters, they're going to be automatically detected without any uh, moderator intervention just after a few games. So they get a warning, then the, the account gets disabled, you know. Some of them are going to go farther. Uh, then they're going to make a new account sometimes, uh, change the IP address, and try another way of cheating. We are going to catch that one automatically as well. And if they dig deep enough, uh, they are going to, uh, at some point, uh, reach the limit of our detection, uh, automatic detection. And that's where the moderators uh, come to action. Basically, the system, we have different layers of cheat detection. And when it cannot mark automatically, it's going to warn uh, the moderators. It's going to queue the player games uh, for server chess analysis. It's going to uh, queue uh, the player profile in our machine learning uh, cheat detection as well. And then it's going to notify moderators and ask them to have a, a human look uh, at the case and determine whether or not the player is cheating. Okay. And does it, does it bother you that, that you guys have to, as a free site, spend so much time and energy um, dealing with people doing this for, for no clear personal benefit? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it, it's it's part of it. We, we'd rather do without, but I mean, that's how the world is. So we just deal with it. And eventually we do realize that 
uh, the war is eventually lost because over internet, it's, it's becoming increasingly difficult to tell if someone is an actual person or a computer, right? The, the, the computers nowadays, they're, they're learning to, to speak, uh, to, to read, to, to hear people talking, they can recognize images and, and whatnot. They are becoming uh, increasingly similar to, to people. And chess, I mean, it's a very simple problem uh, compared to, to, the, to the problem that we are facing even when, when we are just looking at the world and identifying objects. That's, that's very complicated. Chess is much simpler. Computers have been knowing how to do that for a while. They know how to emulate uh, uh, a human playing and it's just gonna go better and better for the for the online cheaters. And we are we are not gonna die. I mean, we know that eventually we are lost. Eventually, the wireless is lost. But as we say, uh, we will still fight all the battles because that's the only way we know that uh, we can still have fun uh, playing chess on the internet. Also, I would like to say that the cheat problem on the internet is vastly overrated. Um, people love talking about it. There is nothing uh, people. Uh, chess fans uh, like to talk more uh, about than cheating. I mean, there, there, there's like a, a, a real paranoia on the internet at the point that it, it, some people, the, the, uh, every time they lose, they're going to be like, it's, it's kind of an excuse for losing. You know, there is the possibility that maybe uh, the other person was cheating. And, and so it's way too too convenient uh, to uh, to think that maybe they did. In fact, uh, the cheat the cheat problem uh, is really not a big deal uh, on the internet. At least on leeches.org, um, it's it's very well handled. Well, that's good now. to hear. I know that people yeah. always want people do always ask about it. Um, but yeah, I mean, it happens in tournaments too, like real life tournaments. I mean, if someone has the tournament of their life, they're invariably are going to be cheating accusations, but like, you know, people's performance is variable. Um, sometimes people play at the best of their abilities and sometimes they don't. So yes, it's, uh, yeah, it's, yeah, um, it's, it's, it's hard to say. It's unfortunate that it's such a big topic of conversation, but I'm glad that yeah. you guys are, are doing what you can. At least, uh, only chess, there is no, there's no real point in cheating. I mean, they're not going to, to win any money uh, by right. cheating. So at least they don't have this, this incentive. Right. Um, so what is, uh, do you have like, um, a long-term vision for Lee chess? Do you have any, um, any goals, uh, for the future for your site? I don't, uh, I never had, and I don't know if I ever will. Uh, it, it's just, it's just happening really. Uh, it got out of my hand, uh, like years ago. And it's, it's no longer my project is the, it's the chess community, uh, project. I, I don't have real plans. I know for sure that, uh, the covenant, uh, is going to be respected. I know for sure that it's always going to be free. Every single feature is going to be free for everyone. There will absolutely never be, uh, advertisements of, on the site, not while I'm alive and uh, all the source code will be open source and open for contribution. That's for sure. That will never change. Uh, apart from that, I mean, as long as there's people uh, willing to work on it and make it better and better, it's going to be better and better. And that's how it goes. Okay. And do, do you, is there, are there scenarios where you would scale back your workload and maybe go back to having a job or do you think you'll be working on it for, for eternity? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, at the time, I have a lot of fun working on it. Maybe, maybe uh, sometimes in in a few years, or I have no idea, maybe I will want to just do something else with my life and, and maybe quit programming and do com something completely different. And that's of no concern for leeches uh, at all because uh, th there are already people that are absolutely capable of taking over uh, all of the source code and, and the server architecture and, and everything. I no longer, I'm the, the only person to have all the access uh, on leeches. Even... We have a word for that uh, in programming and open source. Do you know about the bus factor? No, I don't. All right. The bus factor in an open source project uh, is the number of people who have to go under a bus for the project to die. <laughs> okay. <laughs> See? So for most uh, small projects and uh, for most open source projects, uh, they have a bus factor of one. And Lee Chess stopped having a bus factor of one. I think it was almost two years ago. Uh, nowadays, we have a bus factor of four, 
I say, sweet or four. I mean, unless I and Lucas Bonnet and uh, uh, Vincent Velocita and Nick Lasficas go under a bus, Liches is just going to do fine. So I can take vacation, I can change uh, my, my job, I can change my life, and Liches is still going to do fine without me. Okay. So maybe I will. Good to hear, although no, no plans of changing right now, I guess. Uh, no, absolutely not. Okay. I love um, it. And we mentioned a little bit the other chess sites. Um, do you do you feel there's there's services they provide they 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 do better than you guys? Um, anything in particular or? Uh, uh, I think I guess we're talking about uh, chess.com and chess chess twenty four dot com. Primarily, yeah, in the in the ICC yes. uh, Internet yes. Chess Club. Uh, well, these websites. Uh, they do a fantastic job uh, covering the uh, the chess events, the on the board uh, official chess tournaments. Um, they send people there. They write uh, quality articles. Uh, chess Twenty Four even has a very good software for uh, live transmission of the moves. So that's good, and they also have uh, the the means to uh, actually pay chess professionals, which is a very good thing uh, for chess in general. So yes, yeah. I agree. Thanks to them for that. Well said. Hmm. Um, okay. Well, let's see. Last time uh, before we we let you go, we did talk about music a little bit, and I know that that really uh, piqued your interest. You've uh, you're you're quite a music aficionado. So, those of us who are old and unhip like me, why don't you give us a few uh, music recommendations? Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's fun because I, I remember you really caught me by surprise with this question. <laughs> now you're um, ready, though. Yeah, <laughs> I, I gave you. Yeah, I'm, I'm going. It was fun, so I'm going to give you the same recommendation. Actually, uh, I, I mentioned uh, um, a band that I am, a, and I'm an absolute fanatic of them uh, nowadays. I just saw them in concert twice uh, in two weeks. Uh, they're called Passion Coco. It's a French band. They play uh, psychedelic cumbia. Cumbia, it's a, it's a music style from South America, uh, dancing music, traditional dancing music for South America. And they just add a twist to it, they play it live, and they are absolutely fantastic. Uh, Passion Coco. And the other one I mentioned to you, because you caught me by surprise, and I had listened to uh, an album of Cannibal Corpse on the same morning. Quite a different uh, kind of music that's uh, death metal. And... I was listening to the album Vile. Uh, it's, it's the absolute opposite uh, of Passion Coco, where Passion Coco is all, is all about having fun and, and, and light and, and the sea and uh, drinks made from Coco. Uh, Cannibal Corpse is about death and desolation and brutality and, and darkness. Okay. <laughs> I think I'm and more I, of a Passion I, Coco kind of guy from, from what you've said. <laughs> I'm going to listen for to any kind of music uh, ranging from uh, Passion Coco to Cannibal Corpse. And that's why yeah, I, I'm still going to mention these two. Yeah, and the reason I had asked you, I had sprung it on you, is because you had a, a one of your, I can't even remember exactly, but you had something named after Holly Cook, which I also checked out. So mm -hmm. what what was it on Lee Chess that was named after her? Do you remember? Because I know that it turned out to be quite an old reference. Uh, yes, Uh I was traveling in South America at the time, and uh, I met someone there who uh, made me discover Holly Cook. Uh, she is a very talented uh, reggae singer. I had an absolute blast uh, listening to that singer. And at the same time, one of Lich's servers uh, died. So I bought another Lich's server, and I had to find a name for the Lich's server. And so I just named it Holly uh, for Holly Cook. That's just how that, it went. That's funny. <laughs> okay, well, well, Thibaut, I really appreciate your time and your patience with all the issues. I, I hope that <laughs> I hope that when we hang up, I'll discover that this uh, interview recorded. Uh, oh, do you, well, I hope so. Do you have anything else you'd like to say to our listeners? Um, I, I would like to thank uh, the team uh, that makes Liches possible. Uh, it's really not my job. We are uh, talking about me today, but really, I, I just started Liches, and nowadays. Uh, it's built by uh, a team of like 20 people, but not only them, everyone who is using the website and, and reporting bugs and reporting players and making translation, opening issues uh, on GitHub, uh, making code contribution. And it, it's really the work of the, of the chess community. It cannot be regarded as the work of a, a single person, not as the work of a company, of course not, and not as the work of a small and closed team. Liches, what it is today, 
it's the product of uh, the international chess community. And it highlights uh, what internet has made possible. And I, I, I'm, so, I'm so glad for that. Okay. And if people uh, would like to reach you, what is the best way for them to do that? Uh, send me a message on Lindy Chess, naturally. We also have a Discord channel and uh, we own the Lindy Chess IRC channel on Freenod. I'm always there. Okay, sounds good. Well, Thibaut, I wish you best of luck in the future. I'll certainly be watching to see what other uh, chess variants you come up with for, for a couple people to play. All right, thanks, Ben. Thanks for listening to Perpetual Chess. To hear more episodes, give feedback, or suggest guests, go to perpetualchesspod.com. If you like the show, please help me out by telling your friends and giving me a high rating on iTunes. I'll be back next week with another episode of the Perpetual Chess Podcast. Perpetual Chess Podcast.